Welcome back to another video lesson for our sentence structure series, a series that aims to help you write better and correct sentences. We're now in the second part of our relative clauses lesson. In the first part, we learned how to include extra information in our sentences in a correct and clear way by using relative clauses. We specifically learned that relative clauses are clauses, that is, they have a subject and a verb, that they start with a relative pronoun like who and which, and finally they act as adjectives in a sentence. Today, we will step up the challenge a bit by learning the two different types of relative clauses. Let's get started. As always, let's have some examples. My brother, who works in Tokyo, is coming today. My brother, who works in Tokyo, is coming today. These sentences look very similar, don't they? But believe it or not, they are different from each other in terms of meaning. You can notice that we have a pair of commas for the first one. When you see a comma before the relative clause, that means that that relative clause is just extra information. For some reason, I just wanted to say that my brother works in Tokyo. But with the second one, there are no commas. Why? Because maybe I have three other brothers and I needed to identify which brother I'm talking about. Like I'm talking about my brother who works in Tokyo, not the one working in Beijing. Just an example. So now, we have our two types of relative clauses. One is defining clause or identifying clause and the other one is a non-defining clause. In the first example, there is no need to define or identify which brother I'm talking about because maybe I only have one. So in a non-defining clause or extra information clause, as I want to call it, you have to use a comma or a pair of commas. But for a defining clause, there is no need for a comma. Basically, some of the sentences we had last week had non-defining relative clauses. They were just extra information. Do you still remember them? Like in our first example, I'm talking about a specific person with a specific name, Mr. Chan. So I don't need to define who it is. That's why I used commas to separate the relative clause from the rest of the sentence. The same with the second one, our organization. My readers know what organization I'm talking about. Our organization, not their organization, not your organization, you get the idea. So I don't need to define it. I just gave extra information about our organization which helps poor communities. And again, notice the commas. And for the third one, we only have one pastor in our church, so I don't need to identify which pastor I'm talking about. I just wanted to give optional information, who is a missionary from the US, and I used a pair of commas to separate that information from the rest of the sentence. So at this point, I hope you understand how we use non-defining clauses. I have to say that these two types of relative clauses confused many of my students before. So if you're feeling confused right now, you're not alone. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Don't feel bad. I'm not expecting you to get it immediately. But my job here is to help clear some of that confusion. Yeah, I want to do that by giving you more examples of defining clauses. And as I do, let's see if we can find some common patterns among them. For the first example, the lady who wears a red dress looks familiar. In this example, 
we have to use a defining clause because we need to define or identify which lady we're talking about. If we just say, the lady looks familiar, the immediate question is, who? Which lady are you talking about? There are several ladies in the party. Which one? So, we use defining clauses with common nouns like lady. And this common noun may go with article the. So, can you think of other examples of common nouns? Here's another example of a common noun. The company that I worked for 10 years ago has moved to another city. There's that pattern again. The plus a common noun. Company. And in this sentence, the defining relative clause is that I worked for 10 years ago. It describes the company and I need to define which company I'm talking about because maybe I worked for other companies before. Also, notice that I used that instead of who or which. Of course, company is not a person, so we can't use who. You can also use which, but I highly recommend that you use that for defining relative clauses and which for non-defining relative clauses to avoid confusion at this point. Let's look at the next example. He shook the hands of everyone who attended the conference. So in this sentence, where is our relative clause? That's right, who attended the conference? It describes or identifies everyone, which is an indefinite pronoun. So basically, we're not saying that he shook the hands of everyone in the world, but only those who attended the conference. Of course, that's obvious, right? But you can see how we used a defining clause. Here's another example of an indefinite pronoun. My dad thinks everything that is made in Japan is of good quality. So what is the relative clause here? That is made in Japan. And this relative clause is describing or defining everything. Another indefinite pronoun. So we're not just saying my dad thinks everything is of good quality. We have a specific qualifier, everything that is made in Japan. And of course we have to use that because this is a defining relative clause and everything is not talking about a person. Okay, just so you'll have a better idea of what indefinite pronouns are, here's a list of them. Finally, we also use defining relative clauses for definitions, which is not surprising at all because it's not called defining relative clauses for no reason, right? Okay, for our example, let's try to Google the meaning of the word martyr. Martyr. Okay, here's our definition. According to Google, a martyr is a person who is killed because of their religious or other beliefs. You can see that our relative clause is connected to a subordinating clause because of their religious beliefs or other beliefs. So you can also do that if you want. And it is describing a noun, a person. So that's how we usually define words, right? We give the general description. A martyr is a person. He's not an animal. <laughs> but we don't want to just stop right there. We want to give a specific description. What kind of person? 
a person who was killed because of his religious beliefs. So this is one usage of a defining clause. Okay, let's summarize the things we've learned so far. We usually use a defining clause when we're describing or defining a common noun, an indefinite pronoun, or when we're giving a definition. Okay, that concludes the second part of our video lesson on relative clauses. That was not an easy one. So if you made it this far and you're still in one piece, congratulations. <laughs> Actually, there's still a lot to cover when it comes to relative clauses. Like we can talk about other forms of relative clauses like whose, whom, where, and whatnot. But right now, I just want us to apply what we've learned so far by doing this assignment. First, write down a pair of non-defining and defining relative clauses for the following words. Phone, sister, and friend. Doing this exercise will help you master the difference between non-defining and defining relative clauses. For the second one, I want you to write two sentences containing defining relative clauses for each of the categories we discussed in the lesson. Common noun, indefinite pronoun, and definitions. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video. God bless you as you do your assignment.